Welcome to Eventual Millionaire. I'm Jamie Masters, and I am so excited to do this case study day again. So we have my amazing client, Jason Cannon. He runs LinuxTrainingAcademy.com. So he's a super geek just like me, and he's created tremendous growth over the past year. So thanks so much for coming on the show today, Jason. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jamie. Glad to be here. So tell us a little bit about your business in general, like what you sell and who you sell it to and what sort of uh, things that you saw last year around the time we started working together that prompted you to actually chat with me. Yeah, so what I do is I help IT professionals level up their careers by providing them with uh, real world practical training that can be used in the industry today. And I primarily do that via video courses and books and those sorts of things. And so what I saw last year was um, my partnerships with some other sites, third party sites that I was doing most of my sales with. Uh, some of those started to decline and some of the terms were changing on me and that sort of thing. And I just really wanted to get control over my business, especially since it was such a huge chunk of revenue uh, working with all those partners for me. Heck yeah. You, I remember you talking to me and I was like, wait, how much do you make on Udemy and all those and Amazon and all those places? And, but what sucks about having a reliance on a third party is that, like you said, they can change their agreement like this and your revenue goes down. And we as entrepreneurs, we don't like being out of control in any way, shape or form. So how did you, how did you see the writing on the wall? Cause I feel like you were pretty early in on that. Yeah, I think I think I noticed a couple of things. One was there was a uh, terms of agreement shift on one of the platforms I was on, and that wasn't the first time I, I've seen that. So uh, if it's happened two times, it's going to happen a third and fourth time. Another thing I saw was uh, an influx of competition, like the barriers to entry were kind of getting lower, and then people that really weren't, I don't know how to say this, qualified or didn't really care about the subjects uh, that they were teaching, they were like, oh, you can make money here. And so there was a lot of people rushing on these platforms and uh, the quality of that content was low. However, if they could outmarket you, then they could sell this low quality content and that kind of stuff. And so, you know, just those couple of factors, com you know, kind of led me to believe that, you know, I should probably start really focusing on taking more control of my business and taking the customers, you know, from the beginning through the end. Yeah. So we're going to talk about exactly what you did this past year in just a second. But before we get into that, because quitting your day job and moving into like the internet business space, right? Now you have a really awesome niche, I think. I'm a geek also, right? And love, or used to love Linux. Don't use it at all anymore. But um, getting into that space, a lot of people want to do that right now. How the heck did you pick that, number one, and actually make it successful? And I know that's sort of a big question, but you were able to quit your job from this beforehand. Right. So I think when I first uh, was thinking about trying to leave my job, I was thinking just about how to make money, how to have location independence and that kind of thing. And I was kind of looking at business like uh, in like an ATM, like, let's see if I can just, you know, get some money out of this thing. Uh, but when I really, you know, I tried a few different little side projects and those really didn't amount to anything. So really what it was is, I, you know, I knew I was working a day job. They were paying me six figures. I was obviously providing at least six figures worth of value to a company. And my question was, how could I get that value for myself? And then so when I started doing that, that's when I kind of started focusing on what I already knew, what my strengths were and that kind of thing. And just kind of focusing on that. OK, how can I provide value? But turn that toward myself versus, you know, the, the profits of the corporation and shareholders and that kind of thing. Heck yeah. Okay. So I, I had the exact same uh, problem, I guess, making six figures and going, I have to be able to provide at least that in my own business. But I also had a couple of failures at the beginning. So before we go into this year, how the heck do you pick yourself up when you're like, I am smart. How come I cannot get this to actually work? This doesn't make any sense. I thought I knew what I was doing, right? If you make six figures, you're a smart guy. Right, right. Well, some of us are. Some <laughs> of us. But no, um, no, I think it, I think it really was, uh, it was an effort. Just keep doing action, 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 action. And I think that's one of the things that we worked on together too. And that's kind of maybe one of the things that draws me to you was uh, your focus on action and that sort of thing. And it was, you know, keep asking yourself that question or asking myself that question. How can I provide value with my skills? And then, and then, and then try a bunch of things. Keep keep doing the actions along those lines. And then doors will open that you, you couldn't predict. I couldn't have wrote a business plan, you know, even two years out or one year out that said I would be doing this. It's just this kind of, you do some action and this happens and then that door opens and you go there and another door closes, you know, like with some of these third party platforms and you pivot again and, and you just keep going. You just keep 
keep at it and uh, keep your goal in mind and just keep plugging away. So you are one of the best people I know as far as actions go. Like we had our implementation retreat and you're like, no, I'm just working. No, I'm just working. Like you were just like, this is what I do. And then I just get everything done. I'm like, how much did you actually get done? You're like, this is typical for me. I'm like, that's not normal, Jason. Just so you know, (laughs) most people aren't able to take that much uh, sit down controlled action like you have. So first question in regards to that is, is that innate in you? Have you always sort of just been an action taker or do you get, have any tips for people on how to be better or more like you? No, I, I don't know. I I can see both sides of myself. I think there are a lot of times I am an action taker. I do things that other people just wouldn't even attempt. You know, I got my pilot's license. I, you know, now I'm my own business and all all these other random things, you know, that just people just would, wouldn't even try. So I think there is a part of me that, you know, that's innate. Uh, But there was also a time where a lot of fear was there, you know, fear of, leaving my job and all these fears and fears of, I I published the first, the first book I published, I didn't use my real name. I used some, you know, I used a pseudonym and because I was afraid of what people would say, I was afraid of what, you know, the reviews might be and that kind of thing. And so taking those kind of little steps kind of made me think, Oh, someone gave me a five star review. I should have did that under my own name. And so, uh, so yeah, I think I had to overcome a lot of fear and what, what I found conquers most of that fear is actually action is just doing it. I wish I could like highlight that a thousand times over because because uh, it's uh, our brain will ha- have these fears no matter what anyway, right? Yeah. And to me, the best thing that I found also is actually doing something and going, hey, did you see what I did? Ha ha, fear, look at that. Even though it sucks when you're going through, of course, later yeah. on. And I'm sure what was difficult, especially as you were using the third party platforms, if the writing's on the wall and you're like, oh, crap. It's scary to be like, my income could be just be tanked from one thing that they do. And yeah. ugh. so when you were sitting in that, like, what, what were you thinking? What was going through your brain? Well, there's a couple of things uh, that helped me through it. One is I know I have a, a decent runway. Even before I quit my job, I kind of set some high standards as far as personal savings and that sort of thing. So it wasn't like I was, you know, if they if my revenue fell to zero that month that, you know, I wasn't going to eat and that kind of thing. So, you know, I had some cushion. I had some savings. Smart man, I- by the way. <laughs> So, uh, so that gave me, that gave me the confidence to go, okay, I have a runway. Even if the income goes to zero, I have time to figure this out. But of course it didn't go to zero. It did go down for a while. It's trending back up now because of some things we're working on. Um, but yeah, just, uh, that, and then also just how I got to that point, which was determining what I want and just keep taking action toward that and, you know, just trying to find a way. So, yeah. Okay, so I had you do a whole bunch of stuff. So let's <laughs> let's this past year, like Jason. Okay, ready? And you crushed all the freaking goals. I love I love setting a whole action plan for you. And then Jason's like, Oh yeah, I three times that. I'm like, Are you <laughs> Are you kidding me? What did you What the heck? <laughs> so so can you sort of explain to people because we were starting out um, doing beta tests. You didn't really have your own. Li- I mean, you did, but it was mostly through these third parties. And we're like, Okay, let's give this a shot and see how your people actually respond to you, especially at a much higher price point because the these third party places cut <laughs> cut you big time now they have huge distribution so it works out well especially for your revenue was pretty gosh darn impressive beforehand um but being able to sell the a very similar type course for more money was like oh gosh i'm not sure we can do this what is this so can you sort of give us the trajectory of how uh we worked and what you did this year that really made it so that you weren't only relying on that yeah so uh, the, the process you're alluding to is i guess kind of what you call the beta process mm-hmm. I think maybe other people would know this by uh, the term seed launch or some other kind of similar terms. Um, So what I did was I actually, uh, you know, I was fortunate to have several people on email lists and I kind of kind of snooped on them and kind of, you know, looked on their email addresses on LinkedIn and kind of got an idea of some of what some of my customers were like. And then I thought I picked some of those that I thought that would be ideal and kind of the people that I wanted to work with. Uh, not that just so happened to end up on the email list. And I got uh, got in contact with several of those, started doing interviews about a possible product, asking them what their challenges were, what they were looking for. And then I kept interviewing people until I kind of started to hear the same thing. I could almost predict if they if they said this, the next sentence was going to be that. And then so when I kind of got that, then I was like, aha, I'm going to pause a minute. 
create a product or not even create the full product, but create an outline, then go back to the phone and start asking people, would you pay for it? And, and if so, give me your money. And <laughs> give me your money. That's so, uh, a, and it worked. <laughs> and, and we did that and it worked. So um, I think my goal was something like 12 folks to put in that program just to proof of concept. And I did something 20, something 28, 24, something like that. And looking back on that, I probably should have stuck to the 12, but whatever, it, it worked. So he was, I'm like, just keep selling. You might as well. If it's still working, just keep selling it. You'll figure it out. That's the thing that I think people um, don't understand either is that sometimes too much is not necessarily good either, right? They're like, ah, but you handled it uh, like crazy. We're like, sure, if you can handle that, then go ahead. Um, And that made all the other subsequent launches better and better and better as we were going through. But one of the things that I noticed when you were going through the beta, and this is, I think, a big piece that a lot of people miss, is having that key differentiator. So for yours, it made a lot of sense. There were people telling you specifically what they wanted. Um, That was actually different than what the third parties, like the live uh, training component. Talk a little bit about that because... um, we, especially when you're, you're already successful selling courses, people will be like, why do you even need to talk to these people? You should know your people pretty well. You work with them all the time. So tell me a little more about finding out what that key differentiator was. So I, this whole time I have been making a lot of assumptions and some of those assumptions were correct and some of them weren't. And so what I was doing was I was really kind of creating products, uh, training materials, books, et cetera, that I, you know, how I thought they should be and maybe how I kind of wanted them. And then, the, you know, obviously we have our own blind spots. And so it was really helpful to talk to customers, especially those that have, you know, been through my materials to tell me you know, what they liked about them and what they liked about the industry in general and what they didn't and that kind of thing. So it really helped to talk to, uh, to the, to customers. And even though me, you know, as a shy guy, introvert kind of computer guy, um, that was, that was pulling me out of my comfort zone. But, uh, but it turns out a lot of my customers are like me. So we ended up talking about strange things like star Wars and Legos and silly stuff like that. So (laughs) see, but that's the thing that I think is so important. Like, because you are very similar to your customers, it's easy for us to go, I'm just going to make what I would want if I were them. And that and that sometimes works and sometimes yeah. doesn't work. So the cool thing is, is that you can see where the, the, <laughs> the alignment is also, because it, when we're writing copy, you know that these people are geeky. You know that they care about Star Wars. You know, <laughs> like when we talk, we're like, oh, and then this, right? Geeks can definitely uh, jam for a while on silly things that most other people don't care about. But when, but that's so important for you to learn, um, especially for writing a one to many like sales page. We've been working on a lot of lead magnet stuff for you, sales pages, really coming out with your own brand um, and selling these higher price products just on your own platform. Tell us what you learned and what tips you can give people when they're trying to go th- down that path. Yeah, I think I think the main thing is to talk to customers. I think another thing is to um, make some uh, try to find out the common threads, like something that re- reoccurs. So you might have one particular customer that's really adamant about one thing and it could be just them but if if multiple customers and it may not be super they don't necessarily highlight it themselves but maybe you pick up on it and so once you start to see some trends then 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 put together a potential training program uh, put that in front of people and say would you buy this and then you can even collect their money and then create it as you're going so I had you know, a week and a half or two ahead of schedule when they started. That's kind of, you know, how I wanted comfort level. And then while, you know, week one was going on, I was still finishing up the product. And of course, I could use feedback during week one or whatever to actually uh, help with, with the other weeks. So so the idea is really just talk to customers, see what they want, find the patterns, um, see how you can stand out, deliver what they're not getting in the market, fill a gap, and then just take their money and start delivering the product. Yeah, even if before you have it completed. I, I was really shocked that I would be able to do that. And, and uh, yeah, people were willing to go, yeah, I know you haven't completed this product and here's my credit card. See, okay, let's talk about that because it sounds so easy. You're like, oh, thanks, Jason. Great, I'm just going to do that. But it's not going to work that easy. For, for, it's easy for you because you apparently they love you already. But for me, it'll be difficult. So that's the thing. You actually had, I remember chatting with you about some of this, you had fear of going, wait a minute, they're going to pay me beforehand? I don't even have it. It's not even totally flushed out yet. Tell me how you actually asked for the sale, because I'm sure that's like, yeah, I don't have it. And the first time you ask, it's probably a little like crazy. So tell me about how you got over that. Well, there were a couple things. One thing is I kind of had to remind myself that I prepay for things all the time. 
I went to a concert a couple of weeks ago and I had paid for that in months in advance. You know, I go to the movies and I sometimes I buy a ticket a few days in advance. And and so, you know, you you buy a house and perhaps you don't pay cash for it. You you know, so there are a lot of things that you prepay for. So I think that I had to work on that mindset for myself and just remind myself that this is not unusual. People will pay for something that they that they don't get to touch or experience or maybe even haven't, you know, hasn't even been created yet, like a musical performance or whatever. Uh, people paid college tuition before they enroll and that kind of thing. So that, that was one piece. And another piece was I, uh, you know, kind of with your help, I kind of, uh, I kind of placed it to them like, you're going to work in a small group with me one-on-one. -on -one. You're going to be like a charter member. Um, you're going to help make this a great thing. And by the way, you, this is a small class. You get super access to me and I'm going to give you a discount. It's not going to be offered at this price ever again. And so I lived up to my word, you know, I helped them a lot individually. You know, I did, the price is now more than it was when I did the beta and that kind of thing. So those were, those were the two big things. Yes. Pre-sales can happen and they happen all the time. It's not a big deal. And the other thing is give them benefits and incentives to take part in your, uh, you know, first run of your flagship program. Heck yeah. Totally irresistible offer. Number one. And number two, that's the other piece you were talking to them on the phone. So it's way easier to get their credit card than being like, oh, there's a sales page with some guy that we don't know. Yeah, that's way harder to get somebody to pay for than if you're talking to them on the phone going, hey, it's just going to be me and you. Like, and I'll give you your money back. If not, way easier to ask for something like that. So tell me what your pivotal moment was. What do you think was the biggest difference um, this year for you so far? No, it's, it's really been that whole process. It's really taking me at least nine months, I think, to really go from starting the customer interviews and creating the product, doing the small launch, and then doing two other full-size classes, and I'm going to have yet another class uh, at the end of the year. So that really, for me, has been the biggest thing. So really what's happened is I already had a six-figure business working with these other partners, and last year, sales for my own website, people that people paid me directly without a partner were somewhere around like twenty six, twenty seven hundred dollars $2,700. I mean, it was really small portion of my income. And this year, that just that portion of my business alone is going, going to be over six figures. So just that one, yeah. That, <laughs> I love, I love hearing that though, Jason, like it makes a huge difference and it makes people actually understand that this stuff is possible n now too. You know what I mean? Not like the millionaires that I interviewed from a really long time ago. They're like, oh, back when it was easy to sell online, but you're like, no, I didn't really have a big list. I had third party partners and I was trying to shift over something that I knew people needed, but didn't have a way to sell to them very well. Um, something which is else that, that yeah. really surprised me about my customers and delivering these products is that you, even though customers you may sell at a particular price point, there's always someone in that pool that has way much more money than they paid for whatever it is that they've already bought. And I'm really surprised that like in my courses, I've had a couple of uh, uh, information technology directors, CIOs enroll in my class. And they have people that, you know, they could have paid several times the amount and it wouldn't have been any any problem for them but they have people that work for them that they will be referring and that sort of thing so even your own customer base if you're selling at one hundred dollars there's someone that's going to be able to pay you a thousand or ten thousand dollars so just keep that in mind there's there's always this curve of sure just because you're only selling at this price point today there is definitely room it may be fewer people it probably will be fewer people but there is you know there are people potential customers that have money to spend Heck yeah. Especially going from the third parties of like 10, 20, a hundred dollars a thing comparatively to 500 to a thousand dollars a thing compared to even more. Cause we've talked about what you're going to do to level up and maybe, uh, live trainings and in-person events and, and cert certificates and all sorts of stuff. Cause it's a crazy industry that I feel like needs to be disrupted by people like you who actually care. Huh? Yeah. What a surprise. Not huge companies that are like, Oh, here's your certification for a bazillion dollars. Uh, which to me is annoying as all heck. But again, that's my own issue because I came from that industry also. So we are disrupting where things are going. So I want to ask you, I know we went a little bit over. I want to ask you the same last question that I always ask. What's one action that listeners can take right now or this week anyway, to move them forward towards their goals this year? Yeah, that's tough for me to give you one. So I'm going to give you a couple and I may give you five, which is I think one of the things that we we've worked together with is, you know, obviously picking your goal, kind of looking at it in three month chunks and then every week picking at least one to five what you call active actions. And that really 
keeps me focused. So just like, what can I do today that is going to move me toward the goal? And I can't answer it for you. It's different for each one of us, but you have to answer that question yourself and then put, you know, make, look at that and do that and do that. The first thing you can, uh, when you have time to work on your business, the first thing you get up in the morning or whenever it is you work on your business, do those important things that move the needle. And then, uh, you know, try not to waste time on, on the other things that are, you know, maybe fun to do and easy to do. Like, prune your email list or, or, you know, whatever, just do the things that lead you to your goals. So put those, write those down and work on them every week. You know how crazy I am with active action. <laughs> so, and the point of an active action is to get you outside of your comfort zone. Cause what you said before is you actually hopping on the phone with these people is not fun. <laughs> Very uncomfortable. My mentor made me do that too. Thanks. Appreciate it. This is annoying. I turned bright red. Lovely. Uh, but, uh, but totally, I mean, this is what you talked about this entire time. If you hadn't have done that, you might not be where you are right now. And it's just that little push that you need and to write it down and be like, I'm going to call this many people. Okay, go. All right, I told Jamie I was going to do it. Crap. <laughs> right? And having having somebody there no matter what. I told you, I remember uh, going like, even if it sucks, that's okay. Even if everybody hates it, I, that's okay. It's As long as we get some sort of feedback, that's what matters. So those five active actions are huge. So thank you so much for coming on. Where can we find more? So for the geeks that are on the line right now, where can we learn more about Linux? Yeah, my main website is linuxtrainingacademy.com, and I have a free book that your listeners can get if they're interested in Linux at all at linuxtrainingacademy.com forward slash EM, and you can get a copy of my best-selling book, Learn Linux uh, in Five Days for Free there. And thank goodness I can't remember very much about Linux, and I have Jason and my Rolodex if I need anything. <laughs> thank you yeah. so much for coming on the show today, Jason. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Jason. And I love being able to see the different types of businesses and different types of people uh, that I get to work with. I think I'm like the luckiest person in the entire world. They're amazing overachievers that just need to be sort of redirected just a little bit, right? So that way they can have more time and more money and more <laughs> ease, right? Less stress because we as business owners can sometimes bang our head against the wall and there's no need for that. There's been a lot of data beforehand to sort of know which way to go. Let me help you. <laughs> so if you are a six-figure business owner or if you know somebody that is, we would love to chat with you, me specifically, go to eventualmillionaire.com slash app, A-P-P. You can find out more about that implementation retreat and also about what it includes because we chat every single week so I can really redirect and redirect and redirect and really care about those active actions that we talked about today that will make a huge difference in your business for the next year. I love being on this path with you because I care just about as much as you do about your business as soon as I can get invested. So I want to be that person for you. So if you're making over six figures, I definitely can. And we only open it once a year. So go to eventualmillionaire.com slash app. And either way, let me know if you like these interviews. This is a little bit different. It's not necessarily with millionaires of a net worth of over a million, but it's people that are really figuring it out as they go and creating huge, massive success. Like Jason's last launch did, you know, mid uh, five figures, very good. And we did not expect it to be doing that. Well, not that I didn't expect it to be that long. We set lower goals because we knew that they were achievable. And man, he blew them out of the water. It's insane to see what can be done nowadays. So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. And if you are a six-figure business owner, let me know so we can chat. Take care.